But then the thing is, you have to mm. use your brain and say where it says they alter the words from their pla I, places, places. The irony is, you've gone to the very thing that I'm accusing all you Muslims of doing. What? Which is to displacing the words of your own book. Now, bearing in mind, Muslims should believe what the Quran says, not what their scholars say, not what Chris. Oh, he's interrupting! Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Thank you. All of your brothers just condemned you. All of you. All to the people that came before. Yes. Who are the Ben Israel? Wait, one second. Where does it identify that scripture as the Torah and the Injil? I'm not saying it doesn't. About it's Injil. not saying that it does. When Muslims say that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted, they are saying they don't believe in their own Quran. Which means that the Torah and the Injil were there in the seventh century. Are you listening? Yeah. You don't control this conversation. Control yourself. Those, those who follow the messenger. Right, who's are those that follow the messenger? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Yeah, so the messenger is Muhammad and those that follow him are? The followers of Prophet Muhammad The Sahaba, right, the companions, right? So, those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, who's that? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Prophet Muhammad, right. Could neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Injil. So let me ask you this question. According to the Quran, does the Torah and the Injil exist at the time of Muhammad? Those who can neither read or write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Injil. But then we also believe they know the Old, Old Testament. No, you're not asking. The question I asked you is very specific. Does the Quran testify to the fact that the Torah and the Injil? was something that the companions of the Prophet could read in the 7th century. I'm going to have to research that, I don't know that. What, what, why are you shying away from what the Quran is clearly saying? I don't know that, I have to research that. I'm just asking you what the text seems to suggest. Maybe it does suggest that maybe there's some sort of an issue there at that time. Right, so it's fair to say that the text suggests that the Torah and the Injil was there in the 7th century. Yeah. Right. Which means that, if it was there in the 7th century, where is it today? Um, it's corrupt, so it's gone. Corrupt and gone. Now, here's where you have to do some thinking, and this is why I invite you to think. Remember when I said, let's go and talk? I said we weren't going to have a debate. Yeah, but can I just add on something? Yeah, of course you can. Go on. So I was going to say that you, you, you think that the incomplete Injil and the Torah was not preserved and it was at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, the thing is, if that was the case, why would there be Christians and Jews at the time of Prophet Muhammad? They were assured everyone would be the believers, if that's the case, if the truth was there. Why would there be Christians and why would there be Jews? And why would the Christians and the Jews be arguing with each other? And why would the Christians say, would at that time believe that they um, believe what they believe now? even to Prophet Muhammad's face, like they were saying their own beliefs to Prophet Muhammad's face and that's found in the hadith. Wow, that, how, is, how is all that possible if the Injil and the Torah was not corrupt and it was um, preserved at the time of Prophet Muhammad? Surely there wouldn't be any Christians or Jews. Right. So, so let us now do the thinking that I'm inviting you to do. Yeah. The Quran has made a claim that the companions of the Prophet read in the Torah and the Injil about Muhammad. Which means that the Quran is saying that in 7th century Arabia you could find the Torah and the Injil to read. But the brother asks the question, if the Torah and the Injil were really there, surely all of the world would have become Muslim. Because the Muslims could just point to the Torah and the Injil and say, look, look, your books are saying Muhammad, Muhammad. This is the real Injil, not that fake gospel you've got. This is the real Torah, not that fake Torah you have. But the Muslims never did. You go and look at any of the great polemicists or great debaters of a classical Islam, they never produce such a text. Why? Because no such text was available to them. Which means what? It means that when the Quran claims that a book existed in 7th century Arabia, it lies to you. Because no such book ever existed. The Quran is wrong to say that Muslims read the Injil and the Torah. Yeah, go on. 
um, so why were there Christians and Jews then? Right, why were there Christians and Jews? Great question, fair question. Given the fact that there is zero evidence of an original Torah and an original Injil, the Islamic version, that means that we cannot claim that the New Testament is corrupt or that the Torah is corrupt. Why? 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 Because there is no comparator to make. We don't have the original autograph, so we can't say that it is corrupt in the way that Muslims say it. I'm going to deal with my point and then I'll address your question. Just patience, please. You can get, he's getting a bit agitated. 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 This unfortunately is why I have to shout. You can see now why I have to shout, right? So, the fact of the matter is the Quran is in error. It states something that is evidently false. Why were there Christians and Jews? Because the Christians and Jews, when Muhammad said to them, O oh, people of the book, the only book in their mind was the New Testament as we have it today and the Old Testament as we have it today. We have documented, we have documented, we have documented numerous texts dating from the 7th century. We know what Christians were reading in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century. There were Arab Christians. They have a church that still exists today. Their descendants are still Christians. Would you admit that? And so it is clear that when Muhammad said that followers had read the Injil and the Torah, he was talking about our New Testament and our Torah, not book. a fictional book to which there is zero evidence. That's your, your reply. opinion. This is your opinion. I was going to say that um, the, reason, the, the reason that why that the Injil and the um, uh, That's his own the opinion. Torah weren't there at that time of um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He doesn't say there that was Christians anywhere, and Jews that were arguing with each other. It's yeah. Also arguing with Prophet Muhammad as well. Yeah. So that's that's imp so it's impossible for them for that for that to be um, to, to, for those books to be true and and unharmed because they would become Muslims though they would be believers. Yeah. So then that's what that's what I was gonna uh, say to you. So then how 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 can you be sure that the Injil was the New Testament? That, how can you be sure that the Injil at that time was your New Testament today? And okay. how can you be sure that the Torah the, um, at that time was the uh, Torah today? It's a fair question and it, and it links into what this brother is shouting. The fact of the matter is, You're brother, we have to do we have to do archaeological evidence. Now, notice I listen to you, and now he's interrupting because he's triggered because he doesn't like the fact that his Quran is wrong again. It's wrong again. If you want explanation, so I'm going to have to shout for all of you guys because obviously I can't have a conversation. If you want to listen, the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, we have catalogued examples of manuscript evidence from the 7th century. You can go and find them. You can go and find the catalogues. Are you listening, bro? You can go and find the catalogues of what Christians were reading in the 7th century in the Middle East. We have examples of it. It's there for you to find. And do you know what it corresponds to? It corresponds to the Bible we have today. Now, the brother says, well, what about all the textual variants the Christians say that the Bible's corrupt as well? The brother doesn't know what he's talking about. I do, I do. More because what Muslims are claiming is different from what Christian academics are claiming. Christian academics are pointing out that over 2,000 years of handwritten copying of the Bible, there are textual variants. These textual variants, those same scholars say, do not affect any fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith. None, zero, zip, nada. The Muslims are saying that they have certainty that the New Testament was totally lost, totally corrupted. 
but they have no evidence because they cannot provide the original Injil. So, so the brother's going to provide the evidence of the original Injil. Go on. Jesus said, Jesus says that he does not know the end of time, only the Father knows. So how can Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the Father be co-equal and co-eternal? Okay. The fundamental rule of Christianity. So, the brother, I asked for evidence of an original Injil. And the brother quotes the New Testament that we have today as proof of the original Injil that was supposedly lost. He was making another, I think he was making another point. Was exactly, he wasn't right. listening. Okay, but I'm coming back to your point, coming back to your point, coming back to your point, because this truth. brother, it's got some I'll truth. come to you in a They're second, I will come to you in a second, because you're rude, you'll just you're have to wait. You're rude. You're not so, anyone speak. It's just I me. said I will come to you in a second. Did I let him speak, ladies and gentlemen? Did I let him speak, ladies and gentlemen? This is how ignorant the man is. He saw me speak to him, and he saw me speak to him, but then he says, no, I don't let anyone speak. This is called cognitive dissonance, and you find it a lot amongst the Muslims here in the park. of the time you're talking. So, ladies and gentlemen, to return to the brother's point about the Jews and the Christians arguing. It says this in the Quran, and when it is said to them, the Jews, believe in what Allah sent down, they say, we believe in what was sent down to us, and they disbelieve in that which came after it, while it is the truth confirming what is with them. So the Quran is confirming what is with them, good. Do you which in means that the Torah good. Okay. Do you was in there in the seventh century. Okay, Do you no, see my point me. now? Okay. Do you believe yes. in Quran? Yes. Okay, no, let's stop being rude. Stop being rude. Stop being rude. You're being rude. No, no, no. Come forward. Come forward. Do you believe in Quran? No, I'm stop being rude. No, no, he's ignoring me. Stand here. Stand here. Stand here. You use Quran as a source. Do you believe in it? No, big limit. Limit. Go on, brother. Stand here. I'll say something that you will talk. Stand here. Stand here. There we go. I'll say something that you can talk to. Yeah. No, I'm going to talk to this guy next. I only want to say one thing that I'm going to do. The thing I was going to say is you said that, but then. No, 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 I didn't say that. The Quran said that. You made that point. What does the Quran say? Look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it says. So was the Torah there in the 7th century? The Torah? Yes. yes. Of somewhat, yeah. But yeah. it also says in the Quran... The scripture that was being confirmed yeah, by the Quran. Can I say so, but it also says that the Quran is a criterion. You know what criterion is? It's just a criterion. Where, where does it say that? standard. Somewhere in the Quran. I'll go pull it up. Yeah, pull it up. Pull it up. So while the brother's finding his verse, I want to point out, we've just seen that the Quran says that the Quran confirms the Torah that was with the Jews in the 7th century in the Arabian Peninsula. Which means that when the Muslims say that the, that the Torah was lost, they are lying to you yeah, yeah. because not even their Quran says that. Yeah, he believes in Quran. Now they have abandoned the Quran to attack the Bible. No, I don't believe in this false book because this false book is contradictory. This false book is immoral. This false book is antichrist. I don't believe in this book. And I don't believe it. Because the Muslims don't believe it. You the Muslims themselves God, say that the Torah was God. lost, but their Quran says the Torah was there in the seventh century with the Jews. So the Muslims don't believe their Quran. So you want to say where the Quran is called the criterion, right? Yes, please, let's look at that. So it says here, blessed is he who sent down the criterion upon his servant. That may be let's, the world to honor. Let, let's, let's look. What's, what, uh, what surah and verse, please? 25.1. 25, 25.1. Let's look at this. Okay, so oh, that's two. I think it's the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes. No, it goes the other. This always throws. Oh, there it is. Right. So the brothers brought out this verse. I'm going to stop shouting now because this brother stopped shouting. So I'm going to try and talk if people let me talk. But this brother's getting agitated and he's getting aggressive with people. So when it all gets a bit argy bargy, you know who to blame. Okay.
Listen to what the Quran says. The Quran says this. Blessed is he who sent down the criterion of right and wrong, this Quran, to his slave Muhammad, that he may be a warner to mankind and jinn. Right. So, I accept that the Quran is saying that it is a book of guidance. I don't deny that. That is what the Quran says. For right and wrong. What does criterion mean? It means a criterion by which you judge right and wrong. Yeah, but it all can mean That's fine. I accept that that is what the Quran is saying. But that is not saying that the previous Torah and the Injil were corrupt. Those two statements are not the same thing. Saying that this is the standard to live your life by is not the same as saying that the Injil and the Torah are lost. The Bible is here today. Do you want proof that the Torah and the Injil are I want the Quran to say it, not you to say it. So you want to accept Hadith as well? Some of it. Right, not Hadith. No, I want to see the Quran say it. So, what? Let's have a look. Pull it out. From your book, that's what he's saying. He's not saying something wrong. What surah, please? What surah? What number? Um, 18. Surah 18? What verse? It is what verse? Verse fourth of it. So the fourth verse. So, yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen. I thought you were going to speak with me. I will eventually. Me, uh, yes, I did. You're right. So, 18 verse four. So, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to talk to young people. Yeah. Very happy. A bit like the Dawa team do, week in, week out. Okay. So, Surah. Al Kaf, verse 4. Yes, verse 4. This is the brother's other verse. Sorry, sorry. The brother's other verse. And to warn those, the Jews and the Christians and pagans, who say Allah has begotten a son. Right. Does that say that the Injil was corrupted? No. Does it say that the Torah was corrupted? No. So the Quran does not say that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted. One second. When Muslims say that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted, they are saying they don't believe in their own Quran. But the Quran, no, when I'll finish. The Quran says that I should judge according to the Injil. That's the New Testament I have today. That Injil says that Muhammad was a false prophet. So if I believe the Quran, I reject the Quran. If I believe the Bible, I reject the Quran. Whichever way I do it, I have to reject the Quran. Let him say something because he's been eager to get in. First of all, I want to explain to you what this Surah is saying. Which one? The, the, the ayat that you read. This one. Yeah, what it's saying is this. Okay, it's going to explain, Let me explain. this verse. Let, let's give us a chance yeah, to speak. First of all, what is relating to is relating to the Christians as well. Yeah? Because the Jews, they don't believe in Christians to be righteous. Christians are fake. According to the Jews, when Jesus came, the Jews said this guy's fake. We're not going to believe Christianity, yeah? So what it says here, it confirms that the Judaism was correct, number one. But those that don't follow Jesus, yeah, that don't follow the Christianity, they're not on the correct path. And the same thing happened when the Prophet Muhammad came, Salawatullah alayhi. The same thing happened. The Christians now, they didn't believe in Islam. They said this is fake. Same thing what happened to the Christians. When the Jews said Jesus is not real, the Christians said Muhammad is not real. That's what he's explaining. If you want to take this out of context and take the word of the Bible to say that it was just back then, that's your own opinion. But what I'm going to say to you is this, yeah? Even the Bible today, it's got truth in it. It's got teachings from Jesus Christ is in the Bible. But it's not just us who say it's been corrupted. It's the same Christians that say it's been corrupted also, that's something we've got no control over. It's a fact. Have you done? I'm done. Okay, now notice I didn't interrupt him. Okay, let's just look at the verse that he began to expound. 
which is Surah 18, Ayah 4, bearing in mind that the topic of conversation is whether this false book given to us by a false prophet teaches that we Christians have a corrupted text. Now, bearing in mind, Muslims should believe what the Quran says, not what their scholars say, not what Christ... Oh, he's interrupting! Oh, he's interrupting! Look at that! What a surprise! What a surprise! He can't shut up! I listen to him, but he can't do the same! So, ladies and gentlemen, so, ladies and gentlemen, notice the lack of control! The lack of control! His religion has failed him! His religion has failed him! There we go! Ladies and gentlemen, the discussion is whether the Quran teaches that the Bible is corrupt. The verse is, and to warn those, and then it's in brackets, no Jews, Christians, no exactly! No so Muslim scholars are manipulating their text because Muslim scholars are inserting brackets. So, thank you, thank you. The translation. Notice he's interrupting. He can't control himself. And I'll tell you why he can't control himself. Because his Quran is on the ropes. His prophet is on the ropes. And he thinks by interrupting me that suddenly I'm going to stop talking. I will finish what I have to say, no matter how long it takes it's me to say it. It's only so, three sentences. Why are you taking so long to So, say? as I was saying, notice the interruption again. We heard your opinion already. He can't control himself. So, even his Muslim brothers are trying to shut him up. And he still can't shut up. Because Islam has failed his heart. He has no self-control. Muhammad has failed his heart. He has no self-control. No, you're going to wait because I'm replying to him. And the reason why you're waiting so long is because you keep interrupting. All right, I'm quiet. There we go. Finally, the shrew has been tamed. So, ladies and gentlemen, the verse says, and warn those. And then the Muslim scholars manipulate their text by saying Jews and Christians and pagans. Then the text says, who say Allah has begotten a son. And then the scholars put into brackets or offspring or children. Jews do not believe that Allah has begotten a son. Muslim scholars are lying to Muslims about what Jews believe. Christian, now he's interrupting. Now he's interrupting. I haven't finished talking. I waited for you. You can do the same. No, I will wait until you've stopped interrupting and then I will continue. Have you stopped? Are you still talking? Have you stopped? There we go. The shrew has been tamed. No, coming to Surah 2. Surah 2, Ayah 113. Because the Jews say, the Muslims have said, but the Jews were arguing with the Christians, and the Christians were arguing with the Jews, and that this proves that the text has been corrupt. But that's not what the Quran says when the Quran says exactly the same thing. Listen, the Jews said that the Christians follow nothing. And the Christians said that the Jews follow nothing. And this is what the Quran says about the Jews and the Christians. Though they both recite the scripture. So the Quran is saying the Jews recite the scripture. The Quran is saying the Christians recite the scripture. What the Quran is not saying is that the, the scripture has been lost. So try again. Where's your verse that says that the Torah and the Angel have been lost? Because so far you haven't found one. You just skipped that verse, Surah 18, verse 4. You just happily skipped it and said the bracket part. Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes or no? Yes. 
So there it clearly says that the Christians are in the wrong because it clearly says Allah is warning the people that think Jesus like, like he has a son. Does it say that or not? So that clearly shows the Bible itself is wrong. Because if, if Christians believe that Jesus is the son, the son of God and the Quran clearly says it's false because he warns the people that who that actually follow that, right? It clearly shows it's wrong. Yes or no? No. Why? Because the Quran states in multiple places, and I've given you multiple places, that the Quran confirms the books. Well, let me finish. You're, you asked a question. Don't make me raise my voice. Thank you. So the Quran confirms in multiple places that the scriptures were with them in the seventh century. You heard me quote the verses. Now, if it was with them in the seventh century, this is where you've got to put your thinking cap on. We know what people were reading in the 7th century. And the reason why we know what they were reading in the 7th century is because we have copies of it dated to the 7th century. We have copies of the Torah from the 7th century. We have copies of the Injil from the 7th century. And they are from the Middle East. We know what Middle Eastern Christians were reading in the 7th century because there are still Middle Eastern Christians and they're still reading the same books. One second. So if the Quran is saying that the Injil and the Torah was with them, it's talking about the books that we still have, which means every time a Muslim says that the Torah and the Injil are lost, what they're really saying is we don't take the Quran seriously, we take our scholars seriously. So basically, you want a verse where it says that the, Jew, uh, the Jews' book, like the Torah, is corrupt. You want a verse like that? Yeah, let's go to it. So, but I, I found a verse. Yes, found go to it. Let's go to it. What, what's the Surah and the um, Ayah? Surah 541. Surah 5? So surah 41. Let me get there. Let me get there. Yep, 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 yep. Surah 5. It's specifically talking to the Jews, by the way, in their book that they were given. Yeah, the same book that it said was there with them. Okay, cool. And that was confirmed by the Quran. Go on. Okay. Oh, Messenger, let know those grieve who strive together and hasten to unbelief from among those who say with their mouths. We believe their hearts do not believe. And from among, from among those who are Jews, they are listeners for the sake of a lie. Listeners for other people who have not come to you. They alter the words from their places. Say Sorry, which? Surah 5, which 41, verse? 41. Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. Sorry, hold on, let me get to the right one. Yep, okay. They alter the words from their places, saying, if you are given this, take it, and if you are not given this, be cautious. So let's that's have a look, let's have a look. Says they corrupted the book. Right, hold on, one second. Say let's have a look, let's have a look. So what it says is this. Let not those who hurry to... Because I've got the microphone, so yeah. by me reading it again, it's going to make sure that we got your verse. O Messenger Muhammad, let not those who hurry to fall into disbelief grieve you of such who say we believe. With their mouths, but with their hearts have no faith. And of the Jews are men who listen much and eager and eagerly to lies. Listen to others who have not come to you. They change the words from their places. Hold on. They say, if you are given this, take it. But if you are not given this, then beware. And whomsoever Allah wants to put in al-fitna into error, you can do nothing for him against Allah. Those are the ones whose hearts Allah does not do to purify. Now let's just think about what this text says. The text says that they displace the words from the book. Yeah, displace words from their places. So it's like me reading a book and going like this. Let those who ta follow it in your scripture, because I'm going to displace the words from the book. Are you listening? I'm going to do it to the Quran right now. Let those who, ta who hurry to fall into belief give joy to your heart of such who say we believe with our hearts, but not our mouths. But uh, in their hearts, but don't have confess faith in their mouths. That's what displacing the words are in the book. It's one second, one second. This surah of the Quran is accusing the Jews of not teaching faithfully. One second, it, one second. The Quran is accusing the Jews of not teaching faithfully what the Torah teaches. Because look what it, what, what it goes on to say in verse. Can we stick with this verse? That's fine. What this verse is saying is it's it is accusing the Jews of corruption. But it's accusing the Jews of the kind of corruption of the book says one thing, but you say another. That is exactly the accusation that I'm throwing at the Muslims. The Quran is saying one thing, 
but you're saying something else. You're displacing the words of your own book to suit what your scholars tell you, and that, well, yes, shortly, but you've just got to hold your horses. But, but I am answering your verse that you raised. You raised it, I am addressing it, I am not going to another point, you need to keep up with the conversation. The Quran is saying that the Jews are misrepresenting their teaching. And I'm going to show you another surah in a second that will demonstrate that. Because the Quran says to the Jews and Christians that if you Jews and Christians don't stand on the Torah and the Injil, then you have nothing to stand on. So yes, you're right, it accuses the Jews and Christians of corrupting the book, but not corrupting it in the written sense, corrupting it in saying, in reading the book, but then saying it says something else. Perfect. That's what the Quran. I've shown you very clear verses where it says the Quran confirms the Injil and confirms the Torah that was there in the seventh century. You have shown me a verse that accuses the Jews of corrupting the book, but not by the written text. It doesn't say by writing. No, but it, the next part explains it. So he says Go on. they alter the words from their places, and, yeah. in the, and Allah says that um, includes a bit of um, words that they say. And then they say, if you're given this, so this is a Jew talking. If you're given this, take it. And if you're not given this, be cautious. So that's specifically talking about words. That's so words. You, sorry, you said that's in the next verse. To me, that's in the same verse. So the verse number no, no, must sorry, be different. Same verse, same verse. Sorry. So the I'm second part of the same passage. Yes. So they say they alter the words from their places, saying, if you're given this, take yes. it. And if you're not given this, be cautious. So that's talking about words. But who's that talking to? That's talking that's to Muhammad. That's, that's Jews, look, that's Jews. No, it's talking to Muhammad. No, but look what it says, look. Yes, so when it says that the Jews give you something, yeah. and he and, and Muhammad is being warned to be cautious because the Jews are being accused of deception. Yeah. It's not accusing them of changing the text, it's accusing them of lying about so the text. It specifically uses the word take it, and if you're not given this, be cautious. So that's talking about words. It's, it's, yeah, yes, the words that are spoken. No, but words, also words in Revelation as well. That's what, that's what the words are. What, 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 but it's not clear that it's talking about a text here. But then the thing is, you have to use the brain and say, where it says they alter the words from their pla I, places, places. The irony is, you've gone to the very thing that I'm accusing all you Muslims of doing. What? Which is to displacing the words of your own book. No, but that's your matters. book says one thing, and you're saying something else. No, but the Jews, this applies to you, not the Jews. But why would he use the word? Why would God say the Jews? They are listeners for the sake of a lie. Why would it listen, God say that? Listen, listen. talking about us. Can listen, everybody, listen carefully, and tell me if you hear something that says they change the words of the book, the written form. Because it doesn't say that. No verses as well, it says, "O oh, messenger, let those who hurry to fall into disbelief." grieve you of such who say we believe with their mouths but in their hearts have no faith and of the jews are men who listen much and eagerly to lies so they listen and they lie they listen to the book and they lie about the book listen to others so in other words don't listen to the people that listen to the book and lie about the book listen to others who listen to the book and speak the truth about the book Lies, listen to others who have not come to you. We're talking about listening, not writing. They change the words from their places. They say, if you are given this, take it. But if you are not given this, then be aware. We're not talking about writing. We're talking about listening. And yes, the Quran accuses the Jews of lying about what the Torah teaches, but the Quran does not accuse the Torah of being corrupted. Okay, so, wait, 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 wait. Go to Surah 2.79. So Surah 2. Well, we're on like the fifth verse now of, of something that's going to prove. Surah yeah, 2. So I'm not saying that this is specifically talking about um, the Torah or the Injil. Okay, what, so why are we going to it again? Because in the Quran it clearly mentions that there are people that are writing yeah, the book with yeah. their own hands and saying it's from Allah. Yeah. So the scholars might have um, affirmed, you know, or said that, I don't know. So, so let's listen to the words of this, what the Quran says. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah to purchase it with a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn thereby. Now, one second. Does it say the Injil? No. Does it say the Torah? No. It can only be the what? No, it doesn't. He says it can only be. It can only be. What else? Let me finish. Let me finish. 
All right, so let me finish or I shall. So, the Quran says, woe to those who write forgeries in the name of Allah. A bit like the Quran. But it says, it says, woe to them. So anyone who writes a book and says, this is from Allah, it's saying woe to them. I agree. There were people doing that plenty. How many hadiths were written down that have words of Allah written in them that were fake? How many gospels were written down by Gnostics and heretics that said that this was from God? This was common currency in the Middle East. Lots of people were doing it. It isn't talking about the New Testament, the Injil or the Torah. It's talking about people who are writing books and saying this is from Allah. It hasn't identified the book as the one being written that's fake as the Injil or the Torah. But in other verses of the Quran that I've quoted to these guys on multiple occasions, it says that the Torah and the Injil are confirmed by the Quran. They are read as authoritative. They are told, Muslims and Jews and Christians are told to live by the Torah and the Injil. And I'll find that for you now. Let me find a verse before you no, no, find no, no, another wait, verse. Wait, let me, let me just comment on that. Yeah, this is clearly talking about those that come before the, the children of Israel. Yeah, because if you read the previous verses, Allah is speaking about the children of Israel. He's speaking about the things that they've done and he's talking about how they used to change the book. So it's clearly saying that the scriptures that the children of Israel had, they used to change it yeah, with their own hands and ascribe it to Allah. So there's the answer to what you've been screaming. Hold on, he's, he's wrong again. Listen to what the text says carefully. It says, and there are among them, and then in brackets, it puts Jews. So the previous verse doesn't identify the Jews. You've got to go earlier, earlier. But we'll give it to them because in the earlier verses it does. Unlettered people who know not the book. Now, if they don't know the book, that means the book is there to know. They know not the book, but they trust upon false desires and but guess then woe to those who write the book. So in other words, the Quran is saying, if you write a book after your own heart, rather than follow the Torah and the Injil and the Quran, woe to you. That's what the Quran is saying. What the Quran is not saying is that the Torah and the Injil are lost. It's saying that if you write a book and say it's from Allah, you are lost. No, these verses are saying that the Beni Israel, those that had charge over their scripture, have corrupted it. Where does on, it say that? Well, it says it here it in the previous Where does it say that? It says that. So the whole, the whole verse. Where does it say it? Show me. It's talk, look, and among. Well, go on then, quote it, quote it to me. Where does whole, it say listen, it? The, all the previous verses are talking about. Don't be ambiguous. Show me a specific about, verse. It's talking about the Beni Israel. Show me a specific verse. Show me. Is it talking about well, show me then. He yeah. keeps saying it's there, it's there. Well, read it. So, woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands. The scripture? Then they say it is from Allah. Yes. Yeah, it's talking about yes. these people. Woe to the people that came before. Yes. Who are the Beni Israel. Wait, one second. Where does it identify that scripture as the Torah and the Injil? I'm not saying it does talk about it's the Injil. It's not saying that it does. I'm not saying it's talking about the Angel. Thank you. Because so, the Quran is not wait, saying wait, wait, that wait, it does. Let me just say, the reason why I'm saying it's not talking about the Injil. Thank you, that's what I'm saying. No one can, can clearly say to you that the Injil means the Gospel or the Injil means that. We still don't even really know what the Injil is. That's the first thing. But what we know is that the, the five books, the, the Khumash, that was given to the, to the Beni Israel, yeah, they, they, Allah is clearly saying, or maybe some later scriptures that was given to them, that they have corrupted it in the past. And Allah is saying, he's warning those that do that. It's there. Right, I'm sorry, but it's but not there. No offence, no offence. But clear, brother, clear. brother, I'm sorry, it's, it's not there and it's not clear. Right, let me read it's I'll neither read. there nor is it clear. Right, let me read the, One let me second, read. I'm going to reply to what you said. I asked him, where does it say the Injil and the Torah? And he said, without me prompting him. The reason why I'm saying it's not talking about the Injil. Thank you, that's what I'm saying. Course. So he's contradicting himself because now he's saying that it is talking about the Torah and the Injil. So, let me just find an ayah for you. you see? No, we're not all oh, lambing. Here we go. <laughs>
And here's the shouting match, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, but our polite conversation has just ended. Our polite conversation has just ended. Because this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Let's say No. Where's the money? No, 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 no. Where's the money? You pick on. Where's the money? Where's the money? Lamin. People who come here. Lamin, where's the money? Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm not going to debate Lamin is because this is what it descends to. No, 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 no. And because, and because, and because, and because, and because, and I'm going to be very open here, I find this man a despicable man. I genuinely find him a despicable man. He is not a man of his word. He is a liar and a deceiver. And he's also someone who's not competent for intellectual debate. I know I'm having a debate with you guys. If you want to walk away, you can do. Uh, that's fine, you walk away. You won't walk away. So let us continue our conversation. I don't want him to be in this conversation. No, because I find him a despicable man. I know, no, no. I'm going to debate you three. I don't want to debate the clown. So, so let us, I want to find you a verse. So, I'm here. If you I want keep... to listen to Lamin, stay here. If you guys want to continue our conversation, we're going to move over there. Come on, I want to talk to you guys. So, so, listen to what I'm saying to you. I find him, are you listening? I find him a despicable man. He's a gremlin in the park. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I don't want to debate Lamin is because I find him a despicable human being who breaks his word and is dishonorable. How many men in this park heard him say if I debate him, he would pay me 500 pounds. Put your hand up if you heard him say that. That's what you heard him say. And has he ever paid me? Has he ever paid? He is a despicable man who is not a man of his word. That is why I won't debate him. When he pays me 500 pounds, I'll debate him. He shouldn't make a promise that he can't keep. What, do you think that's wrong? Do you think you should break your word? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Thank you. All of your brothers just condemned you. All of your brothers just condemned you. All of your brothers just condemned you. So, so, I want to find you a verse in the Surah. Maybe you can help me to speed this up. To speed this up, I'm looking for the Surah where Allah says, that if the Jews and the Christians don't stand on the Injil and the Torah, they have nothing to stand on. I have a verse, I have a verse. No, no, no. I want to find that verse first because I've listened and responded right, to your verses. I haven't said anything in like 20 minutes. Though. Well, that's because he was responding. Okay, so you say, but I'm still going to find my verse. Let me just make the point about, let me respond to what you were saying about the, the Torah and the Injil. In the Quran, Allah does not say that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. Yeah, I'm not going to stand there and tell you that Allah says that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. Allah doesn't say that in the Quran. Yeah, but what Allah does say is that people from the children of Israel had corrupted their scriptures. So whatever Can Allah... Can you show us is, where it's been well, corrupted, when it's been corrupted? Oh, Can you give us the son of God? When? Allah clearly says that he's condemning the people that believe Allah has a son. Does he say that? That's in your book. That's in the book. So stop saying Ladies and gentlemen, Lamin yeah. has been condemned by other Muslims for making promises he does not keep. Abbas! If you make a promise, should you keep it? He doesn't. That's why I won't debate him. What was his promise? What was his promise? He said he would pay me five hundred pounds to debate him for one hour. I debated him for one hour and never paid. That's, that's, that's what he's wrong. Yeah. But you keep on bringing him in. What you're saying? Obviously, in the Bible. Okay, that's fair enough. Sorry. Let's come back to us. Let's come back to us. Five sixty-eight. You don't have the front to do debate better. Find the money. Yeah, So I'm not. I don't have a. I'm not having a conversation saying to you that Allah says that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. Go on, I'm listening to you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having a, I'm not telling you that Allah says that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. That's not in the Quran. Right? That's not in the Quran. There's no conversation here. So, brother, the brother has just admitted the very point that I'm making, which is that the Quran does not teach that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. But now Abbas says it does. So who's right? So who's right? The Muslims don't.
don't know what their Quran teaches them.